They have pioneered antibiotic medicine, enabled mass vaccination, and made many previously fatal conditions treatable. Today, those companies in Britain exist as the fourth largest pharmaceutical company in the world, GlaxoSmithKline, a part of an industry worth an estimated £200 billion a year. And it's not a business that hangs around waiting for happy accidents. So, you know, what I'm amazed about is the level of, sort of work, you know, compared to a university, where we, you know, there's so many people actually doing things. GSK is behind many of the pharmaceuticals that are commonplace in today's market, from painkillers to asthma inhalers. One of their biggest research and development hubs is here on home soil, 20 miles north of London in Stevenage. I love that. Philadelphia, Shanghai, Stevenage. <laughs> so this lab in general, this is the early, early discovery within Biofarm, so we're responsible. Dr. Tom Webb joined GSK three years ago and has been working to develop new drugs ever since. How do you do it? I mean, if somebody comes along from management of GSK and said, right, we need a drug to treat arthritis, a new one, and what, what do you do? Do you, do you say, okay, um, <laughs> what, <laughs> what, um, is, a, is a test tube? <laughs> so it, the, it's, it's an incredibly complex process, and drug discovery takes 10 to 15 years. Mm. It starts off with a target in mind for, <laughs> for treating that disease. And then we start off with, with huge libraries. So these might be libraries of small molecules, so containing tens of thousands of different chemical compounds. And it's starting with all of these potential medicines and really whittling them down to one, one candidate, one medicine. So is that sounds very, very a targeted approach, really. You have a Absolutely. specific example, a specific challenge in mind. It's a beautiful example, isn't it? A, a, almost like an industrial scale search Absolutely. For, for useful antibodies are useful sure. drugs to yeah. focus and we're getting in. better and better at doing it as, as we gain more experience. The screenings done at pharmaceutical companies such as GSK allow researchers to test millions of different compounds, antibodies or genes to see if they'll work as part of a new drug or treatment. The scale of the work means the chance of success over conventional research methods is dramatically increased. One of GSK's medicine is a, a treatment for lupus. And lupus is a, a disease which hasn't seen any new treatments for 50 years. Mm. And as a result of this pretty sort of strategic way of working, having a target in mind and developing a medicine for that target using a library has enabled us to, to market this medicine in lupus. Sufferers of lupus are often plagued with tiredness, skin rashes, joint pain and swelling as their immune system attacks the body's own healthy cells. Symptoms this new drug has helped to relieve. And other treatments are emerging as a product of this strategic and focused method of developing medicines. In your view, where, where are the great advances of the future going to come from that targeted approach because you can apply a great amount of brain power on it? Or is somewhere Pasteur sat in his... Sure, the shed <laughs> with a petri yeah, dish yeah. is going to come along and say, no, it's here. It's, it's a great question. If we were just playing around in the lab, I think the likelihood of us stumbling across a discovery that enables us to make a medicine is, is probably unlikely. So we have to yeah. commit to making medicines for patients, and that doesn't happen like complete serendipity. The pharmaceutical industry in Britain is a triumph for homegrown science providing cures for previously untreatable diseases and changing the lives of millions of patients around the world. Well, this is an impressive place. I mean, it's science on an industrial scale. And you see these vast research labs, and that's what you need because you have to do hundreds of thousands or even millions of individual experiments to bring a new drug to market. It also costs billions of pounds. So this is targeted science. There are particular problems that need solutions. There's a particular disease that needs treating. And I suppose for medical science as a whole, you can state its goal in one simple sentence. It's to make people better. It's undeniable that targeted research delivers. But a 
and it's a big but. There is a catch, and it's this. In any commercial environment, specific targeting brings with it a possibility that during the process of discovery, any kind of result that doesn't positively enhance the chance of success may be ignored.